how it happened, the shift from the Stone Age to the Metal Age is lost in the mists of time. Why it happened is obvious. In the human quest for better, sharper, keener tools with which to build a future, stone implements were no match for those that could be fabricated from the metals that were often contained in those very same stones. Gold was the first metal to be worked by human hands, some 10,000 years ago. Then copper. Probably it was a fortunate accident that mixed tin with copper to give us bronze. In the same way, iron was wrung from its host rock, allowing the fabrication of all manner of tools, implements and machines that for almost 10 millennia supported human endeavour in the building of a better world. All the achievements of mankind in that past 10,000 years, back even to our first moments on this planet, are as nothing compared to the advances in almost every area in this past century. The changes have been dramatic, all embracing total. To accomplish so much in such a relatively short time, new tools had to be developed. Metals had to be made lighter, stronger, harder, more resistant to corrosion. One substance discovered in 1751 could do all of these things, and more. Nickel. As we head rapidly towards the turn of another century, this amazing metal has become one of the most important substances to the future of humankind and touches our lives, directly or indirectly, in a variety of ways every day. From the moment we wake, we're likely to be using products which have nickel in them. From our alarm clock to our everyday kitchen utensils. Yes, even the kitchen sink. If it's made of steel, if it's plated, if it's a tool or similar item that needs extra strength, or, like the coins in our pocket, needs enhanced durability, chances are it has nickel in it. Nickel is a vital part of our modern life. So much so that we pay it the ultimate compliment by not even noticing it's there. In the same way, we tend not to know much about the Australian company that gives us most of our nickel and is, in fact, the third biggest producer of this vital mineral in the world, Western Mining Corporation. Now one of Australia's biggest public companies, WMC was formed in 1933 to explore for and develop gold deposits in Western Australia. It was very successful, but it was nickel that really put WMC on the world map. In the early 1960s, the metal was in short supply. WMC had been exploring for the sought-after element for almost a decade, when it discovered massive deposits of high-grade nickel sulphides around Cambalda in Western Australia. The company moved quickly, so quickly in fact, that production and export of nickel concentrates was underway within 17 months of that first discovery. From that time, nickel mining, processing and marketing have been among Western Mining's principal activities. At the beginning of this decade, production was about 50,000 tonnes, and by the year 2000, it's forecast to all but double to more than 90,000 tonnes. Nickel is big business for WMC and for Australia. Each year the company spends hundreds of millions of dollars in exploring for, mining and processing the metal. And in recent years has been earning in the order of half a billion dollars annually from the sale of nickel. Making it one of Australia's biggest exporters of refined metal. The process of bringing this vital metal to the world starts with a blend of technology and human effort. Satellite imaging helps to pinpoint the best places to look. Then the search switches to the field. The exploration team includes geologists, geochemists, geophysicists and a whole range of specialist scientists and technicians in the field and in laboratories. 
to find and then analyze the samples that might lead to a discovery. If they succeed in their search, and industry estimates suggest that less than one in 1,000 mineral discoveries results in a mine, then the mine planning team goes to work. Every aspect of a mine is planned, from the turning of the first sod to the eventual rehabilitation of the mine site. The mine may be open cut if the ore body is close enough to the surface or underground and WMC extracts this valuable resource from both types of mine. The Mount Keith deposit is a fine example of an open pit operation where the overburden has been stripped away to expose the rich nickel sulphide ore for recovery and processing. WMC's Leinster operations run the whole gamut with the Perseverance and Rockies Reward mines. In the underground mines, on-site crushers prepare the ore for hauling to the surface. Then the ore is transported by road to one of WMC's on-site concentrators to begin the long process of nickel extraction. The Cambalda concentrator, for example, can process more than one and a half million tons of ore in a year and an upgrading of the Leinster facility has taken its capacity to 2 million tonnes a year, while the Mount Keith concentrator's annual capacity is 6.6 .6 million tonnes. First, the nickel sulphide ores are finely ground in rotating mills, and then concentrated by the froth flotation process. It's an ingenious yet simple process, developed and perfected here in Australia, and since adopted worldwide, Air bubbles passing through this ore solution pick up tiny nickel-rich particles and float them to the surface where they form a thick froth. This froth is collected and the process repeated a number of times. The final concentrates are thickened, filtered and dried before being transported on conveyors to storage silos as a product known as nickel concentrate. In the early days, nickel at this stage formed the bulk of Western Mining's exports to customers around the world. Now, the company adds dramatically to the value of its mining operations by processing this vital metal into a purer and more valuable form. It's cost hundreds of millions of dollars to establish these processing facilities and acquire the skilled people, but it's been worth it. Not only does this bring greater returns to the company and its shareholders, but it pays off for Australia in terms of enhanced position and higher export income. The heart of WMC's value-adding process is its Kalgoorlie smelter. Opened in 1972 and continually upgraded since, it can presently treat 80,000 tonnes of nickel in concentrate per year. The plant uses an energy efficient process which makes use of the fuel value of the sulphide concentrate. As the material is mixed with flux and fed into the chamber at temperatures up to 1550 degrees Celsius, it oxidizes almost immediately and flashes to a molten state. It's this spectacular change which gives the process its name flash smelting. The slag, or waste, which floats to the top is skimmed off and granulated for disposal, whilst the mat, now with a nickel content of around 44%, is poured off and transferred to nearby converters, where more flux is added and oxygen blasted through the mix to produce a high-grade granulated product containing about 72% nickel called nickel mat. Some of this high-grade mat is taken to a granulator and prepared for customers, while the rest is railed out to WMC's Quinana refinery, south of Perth, for the next stage in the process, refining. Again, WMC searched the world for a refining process that was both efficient and environmentally acceptable. The plant installed at Quinana has been operating on an all-mat feed from the Kalgoorlie smelter since 1985 resulting in a significant increase in mat throughput to 67,000 tonnes annually to produce 42,000 tonnes of nickel with the additional benefit of reduced energy consumption. First, the mat feed is finely ground and pumped through a series of leach autoclaves 
where under high pressure and temperature it reacts with air and ammonia. This leaching process dissolves the valuable minerals, nickel, cobalt and copper, but leaves iron and other impurities as an insoluble residue which is removed. The leach liquid is first processed by boiling under pressure to remove the copper. The now copper-free liquid is then treated by an oxidation and hydrolysis process and then fed back to the reduction autoclaves where it is treated with hydrogen gas which displaces the nickel. The nickel powder is washed, filtered and dried and most of it is then moulded into briquettes which are hardened or sintered in a furnace. These hard silvery white pebbles are up to 99.8% pure nickel the essential element that modern technology craves for the alloys that are already shaping the 21st century. Almost half of WMC's nickel output is exported to Europe. The United States takes a further 35% and the remainder is sold in Asia and Australia. Its greatest use is in the manufacture of stainless steels and as much as 70% of Quinana's refined metal output is used in this way. Stainless steel is decorative as well as functional. The pole that holds our flag atop Canberra's Houses of Parliament is made from this enduring metal alloy. Its non-corrosive and hygienic qualities make it much in demand in the food and beverage industries worldwide. Before our fine wines ever age in French oak, they are formulated in ultra-hygienic stainless steel vats. It helps keep ice cream pure and gives beer makers the world over a means of making and transporting their amber fluid. You'll find nickel steel alloys on boats, in much of the bright work on our cars, and certainly in the air, in the fittings and turbines of today's and tomorrow's jets. It's a good electrical conductor and finds uses in delicate electronic circuits and in the high energy batteries that power so many of today's essential appliances. Every day, in a thousand ways, WMC's nickel touches our lives and research is finding more and more uses for it. As this essential element makes its journey from the mines of Western Australia to the markets of the world, Others at WMC are making sure that its extraction leaves no negative environmental legacy for the generations to come. WMC's policy is to minimize the effects of its activities on the environment and nearby communities, rehabilitate affected areas to the maximum extent possible, and to be a leader in environmental care. The company is justifiably proud of its environmental achievements which have won national and international recognition. Whether it be at the company's oil and gas operations offshore Western Australia or in the Gulf of Mexico, or at its giant copper gold uranium mine at Olympic Dam, or at any one of its many gold mines, or its world-class talc deposit, or any one of its metropolitan or country centers, WMC is constantly striving to find mine and process its vital resources with the least environmental impact. WMC is justly proud of its record in exploration, mining, processing, in employee and community relations, in being a responsible corporate citizen. So, next time you use a pot or pan, hammer a nail, marvel at a plane flying overhead, or just count your loose change. Think of nickel. Think of WMC.